Good evening. It is now 6.30. And I would ask that you would please join us and stand with the invocation by Chaplain Leonard Himes of Beulah Baptist Church. And then please st remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this day and this opportunity. We thank you for our commissioners and all those that serves in the trenches, Lord, to uh, help our county what it is and to make it better. So we ask tonight you'd be in this meeting, that your spirit would reign supreme. With the issues dealt and what's on the agenda, we ask for your hand upon it. Bless all in attendance, and Lord, we ask you in a special way to bless our great county. Thank you for this time and this place, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We now hereby call the meeting of the Board of Commissioners to order. Um, we do know that um, Commissioner Prince is uh, not feeling well this evening, and Commissioner Clemens has given advance notice that she would not be here today, so we um, definitely need to keep them in our thoughts. We'll now move to, regarding the agenda, are there any changes or revisions to the agenda? Chair, I would request that we can uh, move the approval of the minutes up to uh, section uh, 10C. Okay. We have a, um, a revision. Is there another revision? Okay. Here and none. Um, we're now um, asking for a motion to approve the agenda as, or as requested to be revised. So moved. We have a motion second. and a second. All in favor? Thank you. A unanimous vote for the uh, amendment to the agenda. We're now moving to our uh, next item regarding the proclamation for the Fire Prevention Month, and we invite Ms. Melissa Robinson up for that wonderful proclamation. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. This evening we have a proclamation recognizing October as Fire Prevention Month. Whereas in 2016, fire departments in the United States responded to 352,000 home fires, which resulted in 2,735 deaths, according to the National Fire Protection Association. And whereas it is critical to take precautionary measures to reduce the risk of fire and protect families and property, as every moment counts during a fire and smoke alarms help to save lives. And whereas it is important to regularly check and maintain smoke alarms as these devices can provide life-saving warnings and if there is a fire in the home. And whereas Henry County's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas the county also honors the brave firefighters who have lost their lives in the line of duty and their families, as well as those firefighters who continue to put themselves in harm's way to safeguard our lives and property. As our firefighters are heroes who deserve our, our respect and gratitude for the selfless service they provide each and every day. And whereas the Hen Henry County is also committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting inside our county. And we urge everyone to have a home fire escape plan in order to quickly and safely escape a home fire situation, including having two exits from every room, a path to the outside from each exit, smoke alarms in all required locations, and a meeting, out, a meeting place outside where everyone in the home will meet upon exiting. And whereas the 2018 fire prevention theme, look, listen, learn, be aware, fire can happen anywhere, effectively serves to remind us that we need to take personal steps to increase our safety from fire hazards. Now therefore, be it proclaimed by the Henry County Board of Commissioners that the month of October 2018 shall be known as Fire Prevention Month, during which time all citizens, citizens are urged to develop a home fire escape plan with all members of the household and practice it twice a year and to participate in the many public safety activities and efforts of the Henry County Fire and Emergency Services throughout the month of October and all year long. And tonight we have some members of our fire department with us. Okay, well thank you. Um, so let's the board if we'll join for a picture.
And as they're uh, leaving, we would want to say thank you to um, our firefighters from station number one for being here this evening. And again, we just do remind everyone to please think about your fire prevention tips that were given this evening. And don't forget to change the battery in your smoke detector. So we thank you for that. We're now moving to our next agenda item. Um, we have on the agenda Superior Court update by Honorable Brian, uh, Honorable Brian Amira from the Superior Court Judge, and I do not see him here at this moment. Okay, so we'll move on to our next item regarding the consent agenda. Um, the following agenda items are considered for our consent agenda. We have one from Senior Services, which is a resolution approving the donation of a 2005 Chevrolet Impala from Snapping Shoals EMC. And then we have two items from our county clerk's office. One is regarding the resolution approving the meeting dates of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 2019. And then another resolution approving the 2019 holiday schedule. Um, are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? I do have one, um, and it is the one regarding the resolution approving the meeting dates. And I ask that it move, be moved right after the um, consent agenda is approved. So if there is no other items to be removed, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. We have a motion second. and a second. Um, any discussion or comments? All in favor? Unanimous approval to um, approve the consent agenda and move the item regarding the meeting dates of the Henry County Board of Commissioners. Um, we'll now move into that item. Um, it is noted on our calendar for 2019 that there are two dates um, on the calendar in 2019 that I'm requesting that we move. There is the January 23rd date, which falls on a Wednesday. I request that we move it to that Tuesday, January the 22nd. Um, again, that is the date following um, Martin Luther King Day. And then on September the 4th, which is a Wednesday, I'm recommending that that date be moved to a Thursday, which is January the 5th, which is around um, Labor Day. So again, so that it doesn't conflict with Wednesday. So that is my nomination recommendation. Any, it, September, so from September 4th to September 5th, yes. Um, are there any questions or comments regarding those changes? Hearing none, um, I've made the recommendation that we have a motion to approve. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second, okay. We will note that those dates have been noted as changed on our calendar for 2019. We're now moving to our next item with the Henry County Department of Transportation, and we we'll ask Mr. David Simmons to come and present a resolution approving the award bid for guardrail repairs. Good evening, Chair and Good Commissioners. Evening. Um, this is a request to award a bid for um, repair damaged guardrail throughout the county. Henry County DOT has assessed sites and has determined several areas are in need of repair. This uh, request was bid through purchasing department and posted on the websites of the county, Team Georgia Marketplace and ACCG GLGA. Prospective vendors were notified about the postings being the, via the Team Georgia Marketplace and by email with three vendors responding. Funds are available in the department's account for this and uh, staff recommends award of bid 1907 to Stembridge Custom Metals for guardrail repair replacement. Okay, well we've heard the presentation. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Okay, unanimous approval for the award for the guardrail repairs. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move into our planning and economic development <clears throat> items. And the first one, um, we'll invite up uh, Mr. Stacy Jordan Rudisil um, to come and discuss the adoption of the 2018 2022 Capital Improvement Element Annual Update. Good evening, Chair Wood, Commissioners. Good, good evening. This item before you tonight is an annual report, and it is required by the Department of Community Affairs. Uh, regarding development impact fees 
The renewal of the county's qualified local government status is contingent upon the adoption of an approved report by October 31st of 2018. On August 21st, the Board of Commissioners adopted a resolution allowing the transmittal of this report to DCA for their review. And on September the 20th, the Atlanta Regional Commission informed us that the Department of Community Affairs had approved our report. And so staff recommends adoption of this report. Okay, we've heard the presentation. Are there any questions or comments regarding this report? Okay, hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion and second. a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? It is approved as presented. Thank you. Thank you. So this is apparently a public hearing, and I just made a note that we're supposed to have a public hearing on this, so I <laughs> need to hold our vote on that and go through the public hearing process, so please pardon me in that era. Um, so excuse me, um, Mr. Gibbs, I'm sorry, because again, this is a public hearing on that item. Um, the persons that are wishing to speak on that capital improvement update um, will be given three minutes each to come forward to make their comments and and it will be recorded in record so are there anyone wishes to uh, make any comments and we'll take a revote on that capital improvement plan calling again is there anyone wishing to speak for three minutes regarding the capital improvement program hearing none We'll go back and take the vote. At this time, um, we'll open the floor for a motion on that. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Thank you. It is officially approved through as a public hearing item, so thank you. Thank you, board. <clears throat> we'll now move into the next <clears throat> planning and um, economic development item, and we thank Mr. Gibbs um, for the presentation of the resolution adopting the completed Imagine Henry, Henry County and City's Joint Comprehensive Plan for 2040. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, before you is a resolution to officially adopt our new comprehensive land use plan uh, deemed the Joint Cities and Counties Com Comprehensive Land Use Plan 2040. Uh, this process has taken approximately two years and we did this in partnership with our cities and it in august uh, as stacy stated uh, in the previous uh, public hearing that the board of commissioners um, moved to transmit this to the department of community affairs for their review and their approval on o october 5th the department of community affairs um, s sent and we received a letter from them uh, stating that they have approved and that our comprehensive land use plan 2040 has met all of the requirements uh, for comprehensive land use um, and the process that was involved so without further ado um, again thank you to everyone involved um, from our commissioners to our cities to our staff uh, to everyone who had a hand in this uh, this will be our policy for the next decade and uh, and driving and steering the recommendations uh, made for our land uses and uh, having said that, this is a public hearing, so I will yield the floor uh, for that portion of this, of this case. Are there any questions or comments from the board before we open up for a public hearing? Okay, hearing none. Um, again, this is a public hearing, so anyone wishing to speak um, regarding this um, resolution to adopt the 2040 plan um, will have each three minutes. So at this time, we'll call for anyone who's wishing to speak regarding the comprehensive land use plan resolution that's before us right now. Seeing none, hearing none, I'll call again. Is there anyone wishing to speak um, during this public hearing? Okay, that concludes our public hearing. Again, at this time, are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion second. and a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, the resolution is passed. And Mr. Gibbs, as you're about to take your seat, we do want to say thank you to all the citizens who did participate in this process. 
whether you came out to the open house sessions, whether you responded via um, online surveys. We definitely want to thank you, Dante, and your staff for the many hours that y'all put into this. And we do appreciate the cities and the commissioners that were involved in that as well. Because this will be, again, a document that sets our, our plan, that sets our future for us. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right, so now at this time, we'll move into the next item, which is an um, item from our county attorney. And we invite Mr. Patrick Jockstetter up to discuss and present a resolution authorizing the acquisition of um, 2,038 square feet of permanent construction easement. So we'll allow you to take the floor now. Good evening, thank you. I want to take a minute before I talk about the details of, of this resolution just to walk walk the board through the process that your SPLOS department and your DOT and, and whoever else acquires real estate that they go through before I bring a resolution to you authorizing you to proceed with eminent domain because that sounds so very harsh. But um, in a typical right-of-way acquisition, and the one before you today is a typical one, here, here's how the process works. After the after the SPLOS department of the DOT identifies a road project, they identify all of the property owners that will be impacted by that project. They then begin a notification process where they, we, we typically hire a negotiator. It's a, a firm, a real estate related firm that makes these contacts on our behalf. We notify the property owners. They go see the property owners every possibility they can, show them the right of way plans, explain to them how the property will be impacted. Meanwhile, we're getting appraisals done. So for every piece of property that we're acquiring from anyone, whether in, like it is in this case, it's 0 .047 acres or whether it's five acres, we hire a real estate appraiser, a certified appraiser who determines his estimate of the value of the property, and we offer the property owner that appraised amount. The negotiator will generally bring the plans, bring portions of the appraisal, usually not the whole appraisal report, review those with the property owners, confirm whether or not there's any questions. And in the overwhelming majority, probably close to 90% of the right of way that you need to acquire for roads, they're acquired during that process. At some point, the property owner signs an agreement agreeing to sell the property to the county for the appraised amount or for whatever other amount that we can work out. And we have a closing, just like any other real estate closing. They generally come to my office or someone else's office. They sign three or four forms. They get a check and they go away on the rare occasion that either we are unable to agree on the value to pay or as is in the instance in this issue in this case where there's some title issues and there's not enough money on this property to resolve those title issues we have to come to you to authorize what what I refer to as condemnation and what people hear as eminent domain it sounds scary it sounds abusive but there is a big process beforehand to ensure that it's not abused and it's very rare. We, we do maybe, we do one of these maybe every two or three months. We're not doing them that often. Splost, who is acquiring most of the right of way for you now, Splost does a very good job of working with property owners, trying to identify issues, because there are, there's issues we don't, we don't always see all the issues up front. And even when we file a condemnation petition, the overwhelming majority of those, again, probably 90% of those, we're able to resolve during that process. We're, we, we're either able to determine that we do in fact owe some additional money for whatever reason, or we're able to convince the property owner that the amount that we paid initially was correct. And that's, that's what brings us to the, to the resolution before you today. There is a parcel on Peaksville Road which consists of 0 .047 acres, which is about 2,000 square feet that we need the board to authorize us to acquire by means of eminent domain. The reason on this one is not a value reason. The, the reason on this one is there's some title issues. Just like you've got a mortgage on your house or a lien on your house, if the money we're paying is not sufficient to cancel that lien or cancel that mortgage, then the only way I can resolve the case is to con condemn the property. I pay the money to the court and the court disperses the money to whoever's entitled to it. That way we get title and we're not held up because of a mortgage or a lien or something like that. And that's what's happening today. So this is parcel four on Peaksville Road. And we're requesting that you authorize me to initiate the eminent domain or condemnation proceedings. Um, I don't think this is one that will 
be challenged, but I'm surprised at what gets challenged. It's a very small right-of-way acquisition, very minimal impact on the property owner. And in fact, the money on this instance will go to pay off, I believe, some unpaid federal taxes. And there's a federal tax lien on this property. So that's what we're here before, is to get you to authorize me to proceed so we can get the right away and proceed with the road construction. Okay, we've heard the presentation. Are there any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you, that was a unanimous approval. All right, well, then we move into the next item, which is also a resolution from our county attorney objecting to the annexation into and, and or the rezoning by the city of Locust Grove of 98.33 acres of land in Henry County. Thank you, Chair. As you are all aware, uh, we received a notice from the city of Locust Grove of their intention to annex roughly 98 acres into the city limits of the city of Locust Grove. And along with that annexation, there will be a rezoning of the property proposed, a proposed rezoning from the RA zoning classification to an industrial zoning classification. I have prepared a resolution by which the board would object to the annexation and rezoning of the property. Georgia law provides a process that where a city annexes property and will be changing the land use, the county has an opportunity to assert an objection. There is then a process that we have to work through with the city to resolve our objection to either resolve the specific issues that we have related to this annexation and rezoning and it's really the rezoning it's not the annexation itself we don't really have a right to challenge a, a lawful annexation our, our right the rights the county has are to, cha to challenge a rezoning in association with an annexation but it's really the the two of them combined so the resolution today would assert an objection to that rezoning and would initiate the process with the city of Locust Grove if they choose to participate with us. And that's the resolution today. I can put a, a, a sketch of the property for you. And I highlighted it in this dark area. It's this, this area of property right now, right here, is bordered by, I think that's Calvin Drive. And, and I'm sorry, I don't recall the name of the street. So it's, it's this acreage in the middle. The property on the other side of, the, of Highway 42 is already in the city limits, and I believe this parcel here is, which gets them the contiguity over. And the property is currently zoned and used as RA property. So that's what's before you today. This doesn't mean that, that um, it do, doesn't mean we can't resolve this. It's certainly a resolvable situation. And if the county, if the city elects to proceed with the rezoning anyway, we'll have another, we'll have to have another conversation. <laughs> so, but right now what we're doing is, is the board will consider whether or not it wishes to assert an objection, which is step one in this process. Okay, well, we've heard the presentation. Are there any questions or comments? Commissioner Wilson. There's eight property owners involved, and is that correct? And they have the right to uh, make application to be annexed into the city. Absolutely. So this is not against the property owners wanting to go into the city. You mentioned earlier, it's not yeah. about annexation. Absolutely. But it's about what happens after annexation takes place. That's right. Right now, we have it zoned for uh, medium density housing, I think it is. It's, it, it's zoned RA. Our future land RA use is, calls it for low and medium residential. Current, okay. Current future land use uh, is, has, those, has those properties as medium density residential. And the law basically matches our, if, if, if our future land use map contemplates the project, then we, we don't have a right to object. Okay. In this instance, both the, the brand new one that's now 15 minutes old and the old one both contemplated residential use. Yeah, I just want to, to make it clear that it's not against the landowners. Right. And it's not about the annexation. It's about the zoning of the property at, after that's it's right. annexed. And in this instance, if, if there were no request to also rezone the property you might hear from us getting up and say there's a request for an annexation it's lawful right. and we just want to let you know and we've done that a number of times um, and, and we a property owner who is qualified to annex they're contiguous and they meet all the other technical definitions there's absolutely nothing this county can do to prevent them from exercising their right to request annexation doesn't mean the city has to approve it but there's nothing we can do to prevent that 
it's only when that annexation request is coupled with a rezoning request. That's the only time this board has an opportunity to speak. And the way the law gives you that opportunity to speak is through this objection process. Okay, well, we've heard, are there any other questions from the board? Okay. Hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion. Second. And a second. Are there any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? All right, the resolution is approved as presented. We're now moving to, as uh, noted in the amendment of our agenda, we're going to now um, present the approval for our minutes for the October 2nd, 2018 regular Board of Commissioners meeting. Were there any changes or revisions to those minutes? Hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Are there any further questions or comments? All in favor? All right, the approval of the minutes are, are approved as presented. We'll now move into our public comment section, and at this time, we'll look to our county clerk to see are there any public comments at this time? No, ma'am, no one has signed up tonight. Okay, we have no public comments, so therefore, we're moving to our item um, 13. Um, are there any comments from the commissioners? Okay, are there any, so no comments from the commissioners. We're now moving to the county manager comments. Yes, I have a few. Uh, the first thing is, uh, you committed to Dante and his team for the comp plan. I also want to relay from a county manager's point the, the hard work they put into it, the citizens and, and you guys and the board to make that happen. And we we'll appreciate their hard work from our planning and zoning team. Um, our Citizens Academy update, we're about halfway through that, that eight week process and um, it's going very well. It's been received well by our citizens and um, we'll continue the next four weeks before graduation where they'll come actually meet you guys at the, be presented at one of the meetings. Uh, at the end of their class. Um, National Night Out, scheduled for October 25th at, at Henry Town Center uh, so next week. So just want to put that on your calendar um, for the ones who want to stop by the National Night Out. And one more thing is recognize Dante for the Real Men Wear Pink. Uh, it's our last meeting of October, so uh, thank him for that and thank everybody for supporting that, that good cause for the Real Men Wear Pink campaign. And that's it, Madam Chair. All right, thank you very much. We'll now move into our next items regarding our upcoming meetings and events. Our, our next, um, well, the October 23rd workshop meeting has been canceled. So therefore, um, we're having an October 30th um, call meeting regarding the classification and compensation of Henry County employees on October 30th at 10 o'clock a.m. And then we'll have our November 6th um, regular Board of Commissioners meeting at 9 o'clock um, a.m. Um, please do note that um, for um, November 20th that our meeting um, has been changed to November the 19th due to the holiday. So um, please do keep in mind that we've got SPLOS 5 committee meetings remaining through 2018. All the meetings are on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. The next one is October the 18th at City, uh, City of Locust Grove at the Public Safety Building in District 1. We'll have another one on November the 1st at City, uh, City of Hampton at the Forsyth Library in District 2. November 15th, there will be one at City of McDonough at the City Hall in District 3. And then November 29th, again at Stockbridge, the seat of Stockbridge at Merrill Manders um, Conference Center, and that will be for districts four and five. And then on December 13th, we'll have another SPLOS 5 committee meeting here at the Henry County Administration Building here in Conference Room B. So again, if you'll pay attention to those dates on our website, those dates are available. Uh, we'll now, if there's no further business for the board, we'll call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Thank you. You all have a good evening.